A few weeks ago, I received this huge package from Inventables, which contained the X-Carve, a DIY CNC machine which can engrave and mill all kinds of materials. But most importantly, it can be used to mill copper, which could allow me to produce my own PCBs without the need of any chemicals. The machine itself can be configured with a variety of different parts, depending on what you need or not need. My total price came out to 1000 US dollars, and that is certainly a lot of money. So in this video, I will show you what problems I face during the builds, how hard it is to actually use this machine, and whether I think it is worth the money. Let's get started. Let's start off with the contents of the boxes. The smaller one contained blank PCBs, drilling and milling bits and a couple of different test materials. So nothing too important for now. The bigger package on the other hand contained all of the necessary components to build the CNC machine, including a toolkit which does a decent job for its price. And of course, everything was nicely packaged and had no damages whatsoever. Once I was ready to build this thing, I headed over to the given URL to find the instructions. Every step is explained very well, with a combination of text and video footage. But just as you would expect it, with such a long instruction, there are some really minor mistakes. This includes that the mentioned component descriptions not always fit with the labels. And the wiring for the limit switches was a bit ignored during the end of the instructions. But like I said, those are all just nitpicks. The mechanical build of the X-Carve was quite easy to do, but it still took me around 6 to 8 hours to get it done completely. But what stood out as really annoying were the thread forming screws. I wasted around 1 hour, a lot of force and a bit of lubricant to create all the 16 threads inside the maker slide. But in the end, it was worth it because the overall design looks very clean and simple. I also really like the wire management with the drag chain and the belting to move the axis around. And if they would have done something with the location of the power supply and electronics, then it would have been perfect. Now aside from all those compliments for the machine, there is one thing which I didn't understand. In the instructions, you can clearly see that they easily insert the spindle with the metal spacer into the carriage. But when I tried that, it wouldn't fit at all. The hole is just too small. And without the metal spacer, it wouldn't get a proper grip, even if I tighten the screws to the maximum. What I did then is obvious. I used a screwdriver and plenty of force to widen the carriage temporarily and inserted the spindle. Now the securing screws are not long enough anymore, but at least the spindle is in place and it also worked this way in the end. Moving on to the electronics. All the wire connections at the terminal blocks, at the Arduino motor shield and the power supply are fast and easy to do. There was just one dumb connection where they wanted me to insert three wires into one hole of a PCB terminal, which is not that easy. So I soldered those wires together beforehand and just secured the resulting wire in the terminal. It also did involve a bit of soldering and crimping headers. So nothing too difficult in my opinion. Once the mechanical and electrical build was done, I did some minor calibrations which were also described in the instructions. Then I gave the system power and connected it to my computer. Inventables offers a web-based application called Easel to control the X-Carve. It starts off with a first checkup to find out what hardware we are using and whether all the wiring was done correctly. I really like that it's easy to change the moving direction with a click of a button, if there were some wiring mistakes. Afterwards, I can start to make my own design with the software. And it's also possible to import SVG files to carve a bit more professional designs. I also miss a manual control feature, like my 3D printer has, to move the spindle away when I'm done with milling. 
But aside from that, the software does a job just fine. And when it is time to carve the design, they also take you by the hand and explain everything that is necessary so that absolutely nothing can go wrong. My first carve had a good start, but needless to say I did not secure it well enough. The second carve turned out way better and I'm impressed that it looks that good without any bigger calibrations. At the end I can say that the price for the individual components might be slightly more expensive than if you would buy them yourself, but the comfort of a kit, the easily understandable instructions and the well-made software definitely make those expensive even. I hope you liked this video. Stay tuned for my guide on how to make PCBs with this CNC. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.